let's continue talking about the adipose tissue. In this video, we will focus on the structure of the white adipose tissue, which will help you to understand a bit more in detail some features of the metabolic syndrome. As mentioned before, white adipocytes are a sink for storing energy in the form of triglycerides in lipid droplets, which are cellular organelles surrounded by a single layer of phospholipids. If you think that is all bad, also think of those things. Fat in the form of fatty acids that is just moving around your body can be toxic to organs, a process called lipotoxicity. In addition, fat is also needed to insulate organs. And not to forget its function as a hormone producing organ, but more to that later. Thus, our storage organ serves some really important roles. But when energy intake exceeds energy consumption, adipose tissue needs to expand. There are two ways of how adipose tissue can expand, called hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is like creating new homes for me. It describes the recruitment of precursor cells so-called preadipocytes, and their differentiation into adipocytes. Hypertrophy is when already existing adipocytes take up more and more fat and get bigger. But unfortunately, there's a limit to that, as you will hear later. Yes, the fact that adipose tissue can react to different nutrient states is very important. It needs to be flexible and store fat when we ingest too much energy and release it once we starve. Let's look at the healthy adipose tissue first. The white adipose tissue of lean people comprises small insulin-sensitive adipocytes that secrete large amount of insulin-sensitizing proteins called adipokine, under the influence of adipose tissue macrophages called M2 or alternatively activating. In contrast, the white adipose tissue from obese patients show hypertrophic adipocytes and adipose tissue macrophages of type M1 or also called classically activated. These macrophages secrete a variety of potent inflammatory mediators that render adipocytes resistant to insulin. Thus, now you see one reason why obesity is connected to insulin resistance and further progression to diabetes. Let's have a uh, look at the fine structure of adipose tissue. As we see here, adipose tissue is very diverse with respect to the type of cells that compose it. Many people think that it is composed only of adipocytes. However, adipocytes are the cells that predominate in size, but not in number. There is a great diversity of cell types and connective tissue matrix that surrounds the cells. The predominant cells in white adipose tissue are immune cells, such as macrophages and T-cells. And then there are endothelial cells and preadipocytes. These are the precursor cells of adipocytes. Together, they are known as the stromal vascular fraction of the adipose tissue. Let's also take a look at a histological slide of adipose tissue. In this case, we use a staining that is called hematoxylineosine. Hematoxylin stains the nuclei of the cells blue, and eosin stains cytoplasm in red or pinkish color. Even though it looks like they are only adipocytes because they are so big, there is also this blue signal from the other cells. Yeah, and in this image on the right of the slide, you see that increased lipid accumulation in adipocytes during obesity leads to adipocyte hypertrophy. As you remember, this is the filling up of the cells with lipids. Also, fibrosis develops, which is the deposition of collagen around the cells, which makes them very rigid. That limits the access to oxygen, which is also called hypoxia. In turn, hypertrophy leads to cell death, inflammation and insulin resistance in adipocytes. But hey, is that all now? I thought the adipocytes have even more exciting roles. One of the most important developments in the field of adipose tissue biology since mid-90s is the realization that adipose tissue is an endocrine organ. That means that adipose tissue secretes hormones and other organs that have far-reaching effects 
on the other tissues of the body. If we take a look at the adipose tissue from lean people, the adipose tissue produces beneficial molecules such as adiponectin, resistin, leptin, sex steroids, and glucocorticoids, among others, which are tightly associated with a wide range of functions in our organism, including appetite, glucose metabolism, reproduction, vascular tone control, immunity, coagulation, among others. At this point, it is important to note that in the case of obesity and the metabolic syndrome, this important endocrine function of the adipose tissue can be severely impaired. Additionally, classically activated macrophages of obese adipose tissue produce higher proportion of molecules with potentially deleterious health effects, such as tumor necrosis factor and nitric oxide. These molecules are called cytokines, and they can trigger low grade of inflammation, a risk factor for the metabolic syndrome, which we will describe in detail in the next video of this unit. So, what did we learn in this video? In this video, we talk about the white adipose tissue structure and cellular composition. We learn that adipocytes are not the only cells that constitute this tissue, nor are they the predominant in terms of numbers. And last but not least, we describe the adipose tissue as a very complex endocrine organ rather than a simple energy storage organ as it was believed to be until some years ago.